a warm welcome from my side as well. Um, I am sitting in a sunny space, so I hope all of you are um, also uh, well this morning. Um, I just need to clarify that this Turnitin um, presentation is specifically for students to be used um, for students at honours level. Um, the details in this presentation do not contain directives, for instance, for master's or doctorate students. If you are an M or a D student, uh, we kindly advise that you attend um, the M and D presentation on Turnitin rather than this presentation. Um, for any lecturers um, attending with the students, you are most welcome. Um, again, just a note there that we do conduct a separate session for lecturers that is aimed at the specific space where you approach um, the Turnitin platform from. Um, our focus here today is to support our students. Now, from the start, what we need to establish first and foremost is that you are aware of UNISA's viewpoint on plagiarism. Okay, UNISA does not tolerate plagiarism. Okay. Um, you have to be aware of this. You have to be familiar with the content of the various policies that speak to this fact, um, and they are updated on a regular basis. So even if you read them previously, the advice is that you do so again as soon as possible. Um, the latest version of the policy would always be online and would always be accessible. Also make sure that you are familiar with the rules of conduct um, as a registered UNISA student. The reason for this basis is that you have to have a clear understanding of UNISA's viewpoint before you can utilize a system like Turnitin, which does an originality check on, on your work. So um, there is also um, links to student values within the website and more information on, um, on plagiarism matters with relevant detail. I know that many of your departments would also provide you with information and specifics of what is expected in that specific um, field uh, where your study is being conducted. Okay. So what is plagiarism? From the Turnitin perspective, we rely on the Merriam-Webster's online dictionary of what it means to plagiarize. Um, plagi uh, plagiarism is not just something which is clear cut. It's not just copying a friend's homework, um, if I can put it to you in very simplistic terms. Um, it has a range of um, nuances, and we have found that the Merriam-Webster's um, definition covers the broader scope of all things that um, are considered um, to be plagiarism. So it is, of course, first and foremost, to steal and pass off the ideas or words of another as one's own, um, or to use another's production without crediting the source, to commit literary theft, or to present as new and original, an idea or product derived from an existing source. Okay. So if you provide a false representation of the origin work that as in is an act of fraud which is plagiarism okay in that sense um included here is also a link um to an article on what is plagiarism um it's a very short article uh, that explains in easy terms um the broader scope of what is seen internationally as um plagiarism okay so then what is turn it in Turnitin is a teaching tool used by UNISA to prevent plagiarism by checking for originality. Okay, so please do not refer to Turnitin as a plagiarism checker or a plagiarism tool. Um, it is a teaching tool. It is there to check originality. And within that effort, we wish to build academic integrity within the institution because that is what lends the value to the institution and that is the value for the qualification that you acquire from UNISA. So that is how we utilize Turnitin in itself. And I will explain to you um, what is meant by checking for originality later on. Before we continue, um, a warning. And this warning is as a protection warning for yourself, your own authorship, your own work. 
you need to submit your work yourself within the formal UNISA submission space in your college or by UNISA, um, sorry, my UNISA. Um, you should not upload in duplicates because that will compromise your originality reports. You will not give your work to a friend or family member, a colleague or anybody that you know, OK, to submit on your behalf, not even your lecturer. OK, you must upload your work yourself only in the formal UNISA Janet in space using your My Life email address. Any other submission would be unethical outside the scope of the UNISA contract as you are, um, are a UNISA student and you are registered with our institution under the Trinity and license. OK, and that is also how we are able to protect your work. OK, so please also be most careful of individuals out in the field that um, tell you that that they offer you turn it in services or they will do you turn it in for you or they will include it in the editing etc okay you do not submit your work in a different space it is really going to be a, a problem and we cannot protect your intellectual property um, if that does happen so do be mindful of that and especially be mindful of so-called um, free plagiarism checkers. These are often paper mills in disguise and they steal your work and they sell it off to other students. So on that heavy note, I'll continue. On how do you access Turnitin? Now, as a UNISA student, um, you do not have to acquire your own Turnitin account. You do not have to pay additionally for it. You do not even have to ask um, for Turnitin. Okay, the platform is set within the institution according to each college. Important here to note is that not every module that you are registered for is going to use Turnitin. And then also, even in a module where Turnitin is required, it may not be expected for every assignment. So you might have two module codes. One, who does not use Turnitin at all, and you could have another module code with five assignments, but only two assignments require you to use Turnitin. If Turnitin is required for, you, for a specific module code, you will receive a welcome notice from the UNISA Turnitin team with instructions um, that you need to submit your work to Turnitin. Um, that that email that you receive will also have attached a UNISA Turnitin student guide with step-by-step -step instructions on how you access the program and how you upload your work, also how to see it. Then most important when you make your first submission is that you have to accept the terms and conditions for your first upload. And that is simply to um, Ensure that you are aware of the fact that Turnitin takes no ownership of your work, but it puts it in a protected environment and it is within the UNISA Turnitin account. Okay. Um, you remain the author, um, it remains your own intellectual property. Okay. Note that your submissions are permanently stored in Turnitin. So do make sure that you upload the correct version of your work to this correct option. OK, so when you log in on your appropriate platform, you select the relevant module code. You might have more than module code using Turnitin. Um, when opening that up, you select the assignment that you wish to upload to. Um, for instance, if it's assignment one, you select assignment one. Please do not upload under the incorrect assignment that would again compromise your originality report and that can be to your own detriment. Okay. Every assignment would allow you the opportunity to upload a draft as well as a revision and a final. OK, so the intent here is, is that you can have an opportunity to view your originality report when you upload it's a draft. You consult the guidelines 
um, that were provided by your lecturer or your department. Um, you can work on the content of your document and you can discuss the findings with your lecturer. OK, and then you can make um, changes or improvements to the content thereof to better address the question or to incorporate more of your own voice. Once that those revisions have been done for your original document, you can come back to turn it in to upload a revised document and turn it in is going to generate a fresh report for you. Um, and you will get a new originality report. Please note. It will not be in conflict with your first draft. In other words, when you upload your revised assignment for the same assignment, it is not going to appear as if you plagiarized yourself. OK, so Turnitin will recognize your authorship and it will not show as a conflict in your revised work. And the same for the final submission. When you upload, your final version of your work, in other words, the one that is going to be assessed. That final version of your work will again be recognized by Turnitin as your work and it will not show conflicts to the revision or the draft that you have previously submitted. But this protection is only valid within the formal UNISA Turnitin clause. Also, every time that you upload or with where you go in the program, look out for pop up notices. The system has got a built in manual that will guide you everywhere that you move within the program. So read those pop up notices and they will advise you of what can or cannot be done or if you cannot see something, why you cannot see that. Okay. So for instance, a final submission your originality report will only generate on the due date. So you will not be able to view that report beforehand okay? because that is the final, that is the one that is submitted for assessment. The files that you are going to upload for Turnitin, you can retrieve from directly from your computer where you worked on them, or even if they are on a memory stick that is plugged into the computer. Uh, those of you who are familiar with Dropbox or Google Drive, you can use those options as well to retrieve the document that you are going to upload. Okay. When you upload, Turnitin will show you on screen a notice of success that it has received your document. It will then also send you a digital receipt to your My Life email address okay, um, to confirm that it has received the document and that it will process it. Note that it will take a bit of time to process the document. Um, so when you've uploaded, close, turn it in and go back after a few hours or go back the next day to view the originality report. Now, the files that you upload need to be all inclusive because UNISA works with all inclusive originality reports. So nothing is to be cut from the document or changed within the document. You would submit it just like you submit to your lecturer. OK, including a title page for every submission as well as a bibliography or reference list. Now, the title page is the to help protect the submission and to help identify authorship, especially if there is an undue conflict um, found that needs to be analyzed. So that supports the protection of your authorship. Also, should it happen if someone in future tries to plagiarize from your work, that that would be identified. Your title page, usually you do have a, a template or um, a set cover page that you use for your assignments. That would be perfectly fine when you submit to the Turnitin space. Um, if not, you can just include a heading um, in the, on the beginning of the first page. Um, at the top, put a block and to say uh, your name, your student number, what assignment um, number that this is include your unique assignment number as well and the version of your document that you are uploading that would suffice for the title then the bibliography or the re reference list which is ever uh, whichever is applicable for that submission and um, that needs to be included this again will provide confirmation of the research content within the body of the 
submission made within the file. It's easy to cross reference and to verify the sources that you have utilized to complete your assignment. And please do remember that submissions are stored permanently. Upload the correct version of your work to the correct option in the clause and make sure it's for the correct module code. Do not upload in the incorrect space because that will again compromise the view. Obviously, if you are going to write an exam, you are not going to upload the incorrect exam paper or or an exam paper to the incorrect module code, you will use the correct one. And that's the same for Turnitin. You need to upload to the correct um, clause or module code that requires Turnitin. Okay. Now what has happened with your submission? Turnitin received your submission. It told you that it was um, successfully uploaded. It sent you a digital receipt as confirmation. So Turnitin now takes your document and it takes it to a database and it's an extensive database. So therefore, it can take up to 24 hours to generate an originality report, but it would not take longer than that. And please note that I refer to it as an originality report or a report on non-original content. It is not a plagiarism report. Turnitin does not generate a plagiarism report. It does not tell you a document is or is not plagiarized. It only identifies non-original content in that document. So it will compile a list of all sources in the database where it does find a match. Now we have four categories in the database. The first one, periodicals, that is just a loose term um, used as a collective for all sorts of publications within the Turnitin database. There is an internet repository that comprises of both current and archived internet sites. There is the UNISA paper repository of UNISA paper submissions. And then of course, a student paper repository. This comprises of millions and millions of submissions, both nationally and internationally. So throughout the world, all institutions that use Turnitin the papers go into that database. Um, so that would explain to you why it takes a bit of time for Turnitin to generate the originality report because of the extent of this database. And this database is updated every minute okay, of every day. So it is a live and growing um, database so that it can always provide the best and most accurate originality report on a specific submission. Therefore, okay. Now, some of you might be wondering now what is actually the difference between non original and plagiarized work or plagiarized content? Yeah. So, easiest way to do this, let's say, um, if my um, colleague Ms. Somu does not mind, um, I will use her as a, an example. Let's say Ms. Somu presents um, or presents a lecture at a seminar that I am attending, and she makes a profound statement during her presentation, which I believe speaks directly to my research or my own work that I'm currently doing, and I would like to use that statement. Yes, I may do so. I can use a statement. I can use her words exactly. I can quote them, and I can credit her as the source of that information. I acknowledge that this was said by Ms. Somu in my own work. What will Turnitin do with that? Turnitin will identify the text portion, so the words that I've used that are not my own as not original, okay? So it will identify that because it's not my own, but because I quoted and because I credited um, the source of the information. I acknowledged where I got this information from. I did not plagiarize. It's not original because it's not my own, but I did not plagiarize. The opposite of that would be, if I were to take the words, the statement made by my colleague, and I would include it 
into my own document, I would pretend that I am making that statement, not giving any credit to the original source of information and acknowledge the author who made that statement. Okay. So I'm including this as if I said it. Okay. In that case, again, Turnitin will pick up the portion of text and say that that is not original. But in that instance, I would have plagiarized because I did not acknowledge the source. Okay. So this is a very simplistic example. Um, it is not always so, so very clear cut. Therefore, um, your lecturers are available to assist you and to guide you how to include um, ideas and concepts from other people into your own work with credit and acknowledgement, but also lending your own voice to the work that you are presenting. Okay, so what, what is picked up exactly within the Turnit in Originality Report? When that is then compared to the database, and it takes the text and it checks in the database if it finds a match. So if something was copied from another source, let's take a, a popular example. Somebody copies a paragraph from a page in Wikipedia and includes it in the assignment. That would be picked up. It is a straightforward copy from the website. Turn it in would identify that and it will identify the site as well. Um, any discipline related terminology that you would be using would be seen in highlighted um, text in the document. Names and titles that you include. Um, direct quotes, bibliographies, citations, and there are certain things, um, common, um, common terminology even, um, or a template or a requirement um, that was set for that specific assignment. Those things that you were expected to use for an assignment might also be included in this, but it is only an indication of non original content. The proper analysis of the originality report needs to be done by the lecturer or the supervisor to identify if there is plagiarism within that document. It does not necessarily mean that a document contains plagiarism in spite of non original content because you will have non-original content in your document. You cannot change a name or a title. Um, you cannot change a reference. It needs to be correct. It needs to be exact. Even if you use direct quotes, you are not permitted to change that because then it will no longer be a direct quote. So turn it in with identify what is not original. At the top of your report, you are going to receive a similarity index. It is a percentage that discloses the value or the proportion of the document, which is not original, but it is not a plagiarism percentage. OK, it's not an indication of plagiarism. It is only a similarity index. And I emphasize again, if plagiarism is present. It can only be identified by the proper analysis of your lecturer or supervisor because they have the necessary um, expertise and they have the knowledge in that research field to address the findings within the document. And this is what the report would look like. Okay, So you can only see the first paragraph of my example um, a report here, um, but I trust that that would suffice just to introduce you to the view that you would find when you open your own originality reports once they have been generated. On the left, you can see the text and on the right, you can see a column with a heading match overview. In your Unisoft Turnitin student guide, we show you exactly where to click, which buttons to use to open this report and to unfold your match overview so that you can see the breakdown of the individual matches. At the top circled here, the 43%, that is the similarity index. And that tells me that 43% from the content of the document displayed on the left is not original. At this point, I do not know if plagiarism is present or not. Okay. 
43% only tells me that so much is not original in the content. Then we have a look at the breakdown. In the breakdown, you can see a list of what we refer to as individual sources. So number one is um, Wikipedia, that is an internet source. Number two is um, also an internet source, the National Geographic, etc. And the list would continue depending on the sources identified in the database. You can see that they are color coded and you have color coded text on the left. So on the left, in the first um, example there, you can see red highlighted text and that is marked with a little number one and the text portion is highlighted in red. So that would align with number one in the column on the right hand side, which is then also in red marked number one. All the matches in the document marked with a number two highlighted in pink will align with number two and can be found in that specific source. So the colors themselves do not have any explicit meaning. OK, they are only there to make it easier for you to differentiate the matches. So scrolling through the document, um, if, if everything that is read with match number one, in my case, my number two is pink, your number two might be blue or green or yellow, um, it would match with the numbers and the colors. Now to the right, you will also see on the edge of the column that you have percentages, but these percentages are for each individual source. Now, the first red triangle there, the 17%, that tells me that number one, from the content of the document on the left, 17% matches number one. My number two is 14%. So all of the pink highlights throughout my document put together would make up 14%. So 14% from the content matches number two, and then it will always decrease. It will start with the highest one first, and then it will decrease. Now, these are the individual source match percentages. And we are going to give you a guideline for that because I realize in this conversation always, the burning question would be what percentage is acceptable? So first and foremost, for your similarity index as a whole for the document, there is no acceptable percentage. Why? The reason being that UNISA does not tolerate plagiarism. So you could have a percentage, let's say 10% or 12% as a similarity index. That might sound low, but if the document is investigated and analyzed and plagiarism is found in that document, it will be unacceptable, regardless of the fact that the 10% appears to be a low similarity index. If plagiarism is present in the document, it is unacceptable. Let's say you have an assignment that has an originality report with 20% on the similarity index and the content thereof is analyzed and it is found that the non-original content um, is acceptable within the specific document and um, meeting the relevant purpose and expectation of that submission and was duly analyzed and there's no blatant plagiarism in the document, then that 20% could be acceptable. So do not put your focus on the similarity index. If you do want to use percentages as a guide, you can look at the individual matches. And for that, we provide you a guideline of 5% per individual match. Now, 5% is a very wide guideline, but we put it as so wide as to accommodate for common language use, for your subject terminology, for the few quotes that you are going to use and for names and titles contained in your document. So it would mean, if you look at the guideline, that any one of the matches in your breakdown has to be less than 5%. So clearly, my number one, the 17% is way above the guideline. My number two, even my number three here that you can see on the slide, 
the 12% is way above my 5% guideline. So if you work on the content of your document, maybe you are using too many quotations, okay? Because that would also be an overuse of one particular source and would increase um, the percentage usage of that specific source. Rather look at paraphrasing the information, crediting your source, of course, but paraphrasing, putting in your own interpretation thereof, instead of just simply quoting what another person has said. Okay. And when you work on the content, your percentages will by default freeze, as your focus would never be on the percentage itself. It is always on the content of the work and making your own voice heard in the document. So just to summarize, always remember that UNISA does not tolerate um, plagiarism regardless of the overall similarity index. Note, Turnitin presents you with a similarity index for your document. It does not accuse you of plagiarism. It does not say that there's plagiarism in the document. It indicates what is not original. OK, so don't focus on decreasing your similarity index. Focus on delivering your own work. Um, use your quotes sparingly. Paraphrase, use your own words. And if you are in doubt, cite your sources. You can almost never go wrong by citing your sources and acknowledging the sources that you have consulted. Okay. And then most important, as a universal rule throughout the institution, the similarity um, of your document matching any single source has to be below 5%. The reason for the 5% is also that you have a certain um, form of protection of using information within the field because you are a student. It's something that we refer to as academic grace. Because you are learning or you are developing researchers, um, you can use existing information and usually up to a maximum of 5% from another source or from another person's work. With due credit, please do not forget, it always needs to be with credit to the source of the information. The moment that you reach 5% to go over, you start infringing on copyright laws and that can get you into trouble. So stay clear of that. If you have one particular source that you are very fond of or one specific author, try to use different publications by that person, use different books, um, consult your subject library and on where you can search for additional information to support your viewpoint um, that you are engaging with in your submission. So remember, the proper interpretation of an originality report requires careful thought and discussion with your lecturer and your supervisor. So follow the instructions, follow the guidelines provided by them. If you are unsure, contact your lecturer or your department um, to get more information. Behave with the personal librarian for your college on where you can get in additional information. There are certain conditions and certain expectations that might have been set out for your submission that would allow for certain percentages to be acceptable um, and that is only to be guided on by the relevant lecturer. Okay. Um, remember that you have the lip guides. Okay, on this slide there is a link to the lip guides that you can consult. They really have a fountain of sources um, and information on research ethics, integrity, referencing style, styles, um, content that you can look up um, to use for your specific assignments. Um, then I've um, again included the website plagiarism.org. They have a number of short articles uh, in very easy terms to explain how you can stay clear of plagiarism um, because one can so easily step into the trap of plagiarism when you do research on a topic um, without even realizing it. Remember, plagiarism is not always an act of intent. You can inadvertently plagiarize. Therefore, you have the draft option. You have the learning step um, that you can follow through on um, so that the 
the final product that you have is original and true to your own authorship. So for any technical support that you may require regarding your My Life email, please contact the My Life Help um, desk. Uh, so My Life Help at unisa.ac.za. Note that your My Life email needs to be active. We cannot provide you with Turnitin communications and um, guides uh, or the list of frequently asked questions, etc without the My Life. That is the formal communication method. We will also not disclose any Turnit information to private emails because your Turnit in profile is confidential. Then um, if you have any queries regarding Turnit in itself, first consult your student guide and the list of frequently asked questions. The list it's a one pager, it contains 28 questions and most of the questions um, that you may encounter in working with Turnitin would be addressed within that specific list. If your answer is not found there, you are welcome then to write to the UNISA Turnitin desk, which is at turnitin at unisa.ac.za. So we can assist you with um, technical concerns, maybe if you cannot view your originality report or if you cannot see your specific clause or assignment. Um, we cannot assist with the academic content of your work. So for instance, you cannot ask the Turnitin team, how should I paraphrase or how should I quote or what referencing style should I use? And um, those details um, conform to the specific subject field in a department and they can best advise you in that regard. When you write an email, um, these are a few guidelines just to make it easier when we receive your email so that we can answer it more effectively and as quickly as possible. Um, I trust that you can realize and in um, universities uh, the size of UNISA, we get thousands of emails. And the more information we have to start out, the easier and the quicker it is to resolve the query. Sometimes we just get an email that says help. We don't know help with what. Who are you? Where do you come from? In what college are you? Are you a registered UNISA student, etc. So always write from your My Life email account. That helps us to make sure if we do need to disclose information that we can verify that we are speaking to the correct person and that somebody has not hijacked your account um, and that we do not release confidential um, detail or information to an incorrect person. Always type the address in full. Remember, it's .ac.za, not .co. Um, if, if it's mistyped, unfortunately, that email is not going to reach us. Always, always enter your student number in the subject line. Um, we have many students with the same first and last names. Um, it helps if you have a student number to confirm or even um, in cases due to marriage, for instance, where there was a change in name, um, the student then also helps to confirm your identity. And then, of course, the module code where applicable um, in the subject line, uh, in what college you are, and just a brief description and please sign your email, put in your full names. Um, and again, it makes it much easier to identify your work if we have to verify something and to assist you in that regard. And although I provide this from the Turnitin space, I do believe that any of my colleagues throughout the university at any help desk would appreciate a comprehensive email coming from you so that they can best assist you. And that is the end of the presentation. Um, I thank you very much.